I fired some questions at you a couple of weeks ago, Henry. I hope you're ready for more. Oh, I bloody hope so. It's Ash Jambian, uh, trying to answer your bike-related questions that you've left in the comments section down below or using the hashtag Ask Jambian. Let's kick it off. Let's get it going. A question from Castana Chestnut. Ooh, great name. Yeah, good name. Uh, why aren't you Sounds guys... Like Cluedo. Castana Chestnut in the, in the library. library with the pipe. <laughs> Well, Castano is asking, why aren't you guys making a podcast on Spotify or something? We're not. We what? are. Oh, thank God. So we've been recording them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if that was just for us. Just internal use. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we do a podcast every Monday. goes out on Apple iTunes, uh, Spotify, um, Deezer, yeah. and it's on YouTube, where yeah. this is on YouTube as well. Yeah. Easy to find. It's nice. It's the kind of conversation you try and earwig at a pub. You know what I mean? When someone's having a far better time the table over. And you're yeah. Like, what are they talking about? I need to catch up on you and Chris Porter, but I'm hoping that was a good one. It was really good. It's um interesting man. Very interesting man. I think um he's just got a really interesting perspective. Yep. And he talks very passionately about some of the things that he thinks are limiting bikes in terms of design, mm. regulation, and yeah. A lot of history, cool I don't know if he talks about it, so I haven't listened yet, but yeah. Chris Porter was a journalist for uh, a motorcycle magazine back in the day, so was he's he got lots of history on that sort of oh. stuff. Oh, yeah, well, I didn't know, that's pretty cool. Right, Happy Hippo has got the next question. Is it okay to use a dirt jump stroke skate stroke BMX helmet for every type of riding? I mean, they're perhaps not so ventilated, but- I have a prop. There is no, well, so you have. There's no reason why not. Um, you do see Would people. You yeah, yeah, I mean, it's going to be for riding cross country or anything like that. Obviously, less vents, so yep. more protective, but it's going to be hotter. Mm. But they're pretty cheap compared to a lot of helmets. They yep. offer a lot of protection. So I've done some Daniel runs in a piss pot helmet before. Yeah, totally. It used to be like the original like, piss pot and goggles look. Yeah. Cedric Grassi used to run that. No, he used he to did. Badass. <laughs> I just think it was really cool. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, there's no reason why not, especially in winter and stuff, you probably wouldn't even notice that much difference, really. Yeah, I was thinking it's a bit like a snowboard helmet, where it sort of keeps you a bit warmer yeah, in winter. Yeah, that's it. I tend to keep it for skate parks, dirt jump, that sort of thing, personally. Nice. So now we have a question from Connor Disnew, and he says, if you could go out, for, if you go out for a ride and come home with a wet bike, do you have to dry it off, or is it okay to leave it? Well, I know what you're going to say, Henry. You know, you're going to say look after it and dry it out. Mm -hmm. However, in the past, I've done it, I can't remember where, but probably at a race where I haven't had the facilities on me at that time to dry it out and clean mm -hmm. it and lube it. And I've put it into a cold van overnight. And if it's cold, it shouldn't rust. It's only if it gets warm should that bike start corroding. Oh, yeah, true. So it's been all right. I'll then wipe it down in the morning and lube it up. So, But wait a minute, because if you leave your bike in a cold cellar, it will rust. I don't know the, the answers to that. Humidity <laughs> must come into account somewhere. I actually did a bit of a thing for GCN, GMBN Tech that's going to be coming out in the next week or two. Mm. And basically, it's about the rusting of chains and the effects, etc., etc. Yeah. And what we found out was, because I degreased the chains beforehand, the amount of residual protection that they had right. just from being degreased. Yeah. They, they didn't. It was a bit annoying because the results weren't as spectacular as I wanted mm. them to be. But using like a water displacer or DBs in your chain only takes yeah. a moment. And, um, to be honest, at home, I might be a bit geeky, but I've got like a drying out rag and then an oily rag. Mm. So I've got sort of an old towel that I dry my bike after I've washed it. And then I get the oily one and dry out the chain. And then I use some WD-40 displacement to yeah. get it and then do it again and yeah. then lube it. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's what you want to do. That's what you need to do. And um, do, you have, do you have like a hierarchy, hierarchy of rags? Yeah. And so they've eventually <laughs> yeah. moved down yeah. and it's like the new golden boy comes in. <laughs> yeah. <Aww>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. An old GMBN t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> How not to wash your pride and joy. We recommend that you do not follow most of these practices. We had to show you how not to do it so you don't learn the hard way. My bike's still muddy. At least it's all dry. It's going to flake off super easy. What's the worst that could happen? What are you doing, Blake? Never wipe dry mud off your bike with a sponge. Always keep it moist when you're cleaning your bike. Especially if you have a nice sparkling bike, when you wipe dry mud off your bike and it gets into the sun when it's dry, it's just going to look all scratched and horrible. Don't wash your bike dry. So next we have a question from Michael Robert Hackey. And he says, when do you guys know you should replace your cleats? Well, uh, I use Crank Brothers, and eventually you'll just work out they get a bit sloppier, like mm. to get in and out, they don't, they're not quite as clean, yeah. not so much of a click. 
Um, but to be honest, I know some people say they well, they replace them quite often. I leave them until they're really sort of gone, and then I think they're fine most of the time. Yeah, I, f I find it's not so much getting in; it's more of a vague sensation when getting out. True. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, Shimano, I don't know. I know they're like a really definite <laughs> when you yeah. tip in, but I never really use Shimano. Shimano, they tend to get more of a float. Yeah. The, the feeling I I I. I in my experience, they have the same feeling when unclipping, yeah. but actually they have a bit more of a yeah move around, bit more of a move around, yeah. Mm. Um, but the Shimano ones tend to go for ages, ages yeah. and ages and ages. Crank Brothers last a fair time, but Shimano seem to be almost. I'm not compatible with Shimano. Oh, are you not? Not so much because I find I'm I because I'm learned to ride on flats. Mm -hmm. I actually feel that I twist my feet, and I only notice that when I'm riding on Shimanos and I corner and I, and I unclip at both. Pedals. Oh yeah, so I need more float. That I think that's the most terrifying thing in the world when you just yeah. put your hips into it. Just go bang, yeah. double ejecting. Weird feeling. Next, we have a question from Robo Send, and he says, "Why do almost all the pro downhill riders wear pants and not shorts? The norm among casual riders seems to be shorts. So, are there any performance gains wearing pants?" I would say reason number one is fashion, more than anything. Yeah. Reason number two, actually I used to race down on pants more often than not. Oh, well, just nice little setup there, Neil. <laughs> well, obviously the very fashion conscious do. I yeah, myself yeah. was a trendsetter in this regard. Well, <laughs> um, but I felt like it was more protective because I used to fall off a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like the motocross style trousers and knee pads was way more protective even when I did fall off. So yeah. I liked it for that reason. Perhaps more aero. You see Bruni in his special race pants. They're super tight from the they knee down. They're tight. sort of different colours, well, aren't they? But his, yeah, his ones look like those um, like shortbread fingers dipped in chocolate. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Just chocolate up to the knees. I Real think they strange look, look terrible to us. And I've talked about <laughs> it. It's probably the fourth time I've talked about it. <laughs> quite <laughs> outraged. <laughs> I've, I've never actually worn the pants. Oh, yeah. I've only ever worn shorts. Oh, I love them. The yeah. new modern ones, they're really sort of cut nicely. Mm. Different panels, really comfy. And in winter, I love it. Well, that's it. I haven't done a winter in a while. Yeah. So I think this year I'm going to be thinking <laughs> yeah. should probably be looking at that. But also, there are claims there. They are more aerodynamic. There isn't the bit of to demonstrate to go yeah. in there. Up the old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and that's all you need to know about pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, next question. 25 Alephi. Uh, would you recommend flat pedals for dirt jumping? Um, I would personally say it sounds like a, well, a must, flat pedals, clips on dirt jumps, especially when you're learning. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, you know, I would go at it from the other angle, so I definitely wouldn't recommend clips for a dirt jumping, to mm. be honest. You do see it, I think, sometimes with BMX and four cross guys. Yeah. You see them and you think, oh, well, maybe it's that's for pure racing. They'll ride, they'll take things to such an extreme, they'll be wearing, you know, those incredibly stiff cross country almost like road shoes yeah yeah you know um, disco slippers yeah that's what they'd be called for more your fa fashion <laughs> setting there neil um but i would say actually i'm coming from somebody that i started on clips yeah to ride and in recent years i've gone to flats just to you know to, to work on my riding technique better and mm. you know i've i think that jumping has definitely come on absolutely so much better since uh, uh here's blake with some common jumping mistakes Have you ever heard anyone say just pull on the bars to get up in the air? Well, <laughs> it's a little bit more complex than that. It's not just about pulling on the bars because if you're just pulling on the bars and you've got arms like Arnie, you're just gonna go like that. You're gonna send your front up too high. You're gonna not use your legs. You're just gonna be all bars and it's gonna be disastrous. Tone Loke, how often do pro mountain bikers replace their chains? I've seen some pros breaking chains. You know, a lot of downhill races actually, mm -hmm. out of gates. That's something you think they replace every race? Great question for someone who used to work on the circuit. It is something you replace every race, yeah. normally. So people... If you're at the top, I would say, because my old teammate used to do it and I didn't, because mm. I basically he was the golden boy of the team. <laughs> he would have a chain for every race, I wouldn't. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you did every race. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I would normally um, replace it on Friday. Mm -hmm. So you don't want them to go into a new chain. Before, race before, before the race day, yeah. you want them to get a good amount of running. Similarly, though, you do need to be visually inspecting that chain to make sure there are no sort of where it's flared out or anything yeah. like that. I think often people say, "Why do they break so many chains?" 
and people go, oh, well, and you know, people jump on it. Oh, well, actually, they replace it just before a race one. No, they don't. What I think it is, is comparable to, say, track racing, yep. where they have perfect chain line and they still break chains. Yeah. Mountain bikers, which don't have perfect chain line, they're going, you know, absolutely just as hard, but they're also trying to grab gears. It's almost, well, you see it a lot at the gate. It's obviously the Aaron Gwynn. Mm-hmm. Nico uh, Mullally. Rachel Atherton, did you do that at the gate? Yes, yeah. Rachel Atherton, yeah. Um, I did it out of the gate back in the day with my first ever yeah, World Cup. Yeah, trend set simmer downhill. <laughs> the pants, the disco <laughs> slippers, doing it before Aaron Gwynn. First World Cup <laughs> I ever tried to qualify and, and snap my chain out of the gate and qualify. Oh, wow. And I got a right turn off by my mechanic at the time for not checking every link, which I thought at the time was mental. And in hindsight, he was right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, I also feel, and this is maybe me being a bit pretty, but the factory lube you get, it's like a motorcycle chain. Yeah. You know, the, the lubri- lubrica- lubrication it's you get. It's sticky. Yeah, it's, it's, you can't get as effectively that that chain loop do you bottom. keep that on so i know a lot of mechanics would just get rid of it Psst, w4 get De- rid of that it depends on the brand um sram ones are sticky sram ones i feel is packaging essentially no. so i get rid of that kmc ones the factory loop is absolutely fantastic and um the yeah. it is personally i really like it top lube tips yeah for people that care if there's anyone listening <laughs> uh, <laughs> Milan Valinda great vid GM and can he do more tandem videos mine is really cool yeah I think he, it's just completely but yeah definitely more coming yeah so not for a little while but you know definitely coming yeah no and yeah, you're right super super good but I think it's just a really cool I think people let their guard down a bit more yeah I mean say that we've got Vorborn I don't think it's guards ever well necessarily <laughs> no, but you know what I mean I think it's nice this question is from somebody called Austin Ah Shoop. I thought I said Stroop. There's a motocrosser. Austin Shoop. <laughs> uh, looking for advice for doing single track with no suspension. I have the Specialized Sequoia. Do you know that one? Yeah, I think I do. No suspension, steel fork, big tires. Love the bike. Bought it when I lived in a gravel dense area, but moved to a single track dense area and can't afford a mountain bike. Uh, but I found single track to be an interesting challenge with this bike. Ah, so this is a, must be a, a gravel bike. I'm yes, guessing. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's kind of an adventure sort of gravel bike. So you can ride them on single track. Yeah. I never have, to be honest, but you see people do. Blake loves it. Mad for it. Can't get him off the cyclocross bike, gravel bike combo. The tyres are going to be the big one, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get some pretty sizable tyres. If the bike takes the the clearance for bigger mm-hmm. tyres, I would stick on something as big as you can, probably. Yeah, I'd say maybe also... If you wanted to be a bit in depth and you're going to bigger tires, the thing I would often worry about is like high load, and because it's got mm. such a, they've got such light beads on those tires. Yeah. I would think next time you could take your tire off, maybe put some electrical tape around there or something yeah. to tighten up the bead to stop it potentially folding off. Mm. Yeah. But that would just be me just being a bit nerdy, perhaps. But um, yeah, nothing wrong with being nerdy. <laughs> well, you say that now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I think. Uh, you can definitely do it. Just watch out for tyres and um, yeah, keep your pressure appropriately topped up and yeah, you'll be all good. Well, I just hiked up this huge hill, come to a, a section that's is quite techy. Look at this. Quite out of its comfort zone, I think, for this bike. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Oh. Oh no, I'm not doing that. Full cross. <laughs> if they can do it, I can do it. This week's Correct Me If I'm Wrong video sent in via the uploader is from Harvey, who's riding a Giant Anthem 2015 SL uh, in L- Lipuk in Hampshire in the UK. And he's asking about whipping. So he's trying to whip, but I don't think I'm getting out enough. Cool whip. Cool whip. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's definitely movement going on. I would say that, to be honest, that jump looks a bit fast. Looks like you're going super fast, and it's actually sort of a long and low jump. Mm-hmm. I would rather find a sort of where you went up and sort of you paused in the air. Yeah, and it's gonna give you more time to really sort of move the bike around. And whips really come from the takeoff, so taking off and turning into it. Uh, and I don't think you'd want to do that necessarily on a fast jump because if you get it wrong as well. Yeah, true that. So find a slower, taller jump and turn into the lip and send us a video if you improve it. That sounds about right. On the money. Yep. Done. 
definitely let us know if you're getting on well and use the uploader again. Hopefully that'll improve soon. Thanks Henry, that's another ask. Uh, if you wanna see how to get better quick, a video I shot whilst out in Squamish, over here for that one. Yeah, totally, if you wanna get the kettle on, have a nice sit down, unwind the smooth talking Chris Porter, being interrupted by myself yeah. uninvitedly for 45 <laughs> minutes, click here for the podcast. Thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.